afternoon everybody and welcome to Reptile Encounters Wild live stream today. My name's Tia and I'm a wildlife ambassador here at Reptile Encounters which means I get to do my dream job of connecting people far and wide with some of Australia's most incredible, unique and endangered native animals. Our mission at the moment is to make sure everybody at home is staying healthy and happy and if we could add some excitement into your lounge room just a little bit I would be totally happy and feeling very very grateful for that. Now one of those ways to brighten up your rainy day, I can just hear the rain on our tin roof right now as we speak. Make sure you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, you're checking out our daily videos on Facebook and teachers we are offering our school incursions as wild live streams. So please don't be a stranger in this strange time. Uh, make sure you contact Reptile Encounters for a little bit more information on that. Now, I am going to reintroduce myself. My name's Tia. I'm from Reptile Encounters and I've been passionate about nature and its conservation for my whole entire life. Now, we were gonna be doing something a little bit interesting and very, very special today, but as the rain falls down, uh, we had to cancel our plans because we, perfect timing, we were actually going to take a tour to the most wonderful science and conservation based garden that is actually at Athol Road Primary School. And the man behind the magic, his name is Brian Hunter. And the reason why we were going to visit Brian and see his amazing garden creation was in fact because he was kind enough to actually donate some of that delicious produce from his garden to Reptile Encounters for our animals to snack on. So thank you so much, Brian, and shout out to you. Now, because we had to move our live stream indoors today, I've actually brought the garden with me. So if you want to appreciate our beautiful flowering and fruity set here. Um, I brought the garden to you and I am going to be chatting to you guys a little bit about the importance of gardening at home, whether it be native gardens or actually producing your own food to grow and eat. Now I say this with as much respect as possible for all those amazing farmers out there that actually feed our country. Thank you so much. But um, when the Food is produced in commercial numbers. So commercial farming, a lot of time, energy, water and resources actually go into producing this food and there can be some negative effects. So we can talk about, obviously we love our wildlife and we want them to have lots of amazing habitat to live in. So did you know in our entire planet globally, 40% of that global land is actually cleared for farming. So that's 40% of habitat, which would have been forests, rivers, jungles, um, all that gorgeous land um, has been cleared for farming. So that's habitat destruction there. Lots of water goes into farming as well. Uh, a lot of the time, sadly, there is a lot of chemicals and fertilizers and pesticides sprayed all over that crops, which causes pollution. Not only pollution in the air, but those chemicals run off into the water. A lot of farms, they are based around rivers and streams, especially in Australia. We've got that amazing Murray-Darling Basin that's on our very own side of Australia. Chemicals run into that water and that water we actually drink, we shower with, and animals share this water as a habitat with us as well. A lot of these fruits and veg that gets grown, they actually get packed in lots of plastic. Nothing annoys me more than having a fruit like a banana, let's say, covered in plastic. It already has its natural wrapping. It doesn't need plastic. Now, also these fruits and veg, they all get piled up into really big trucks and they drive hundreds and hundreds of kilometers around Australia to get to your supermarkets. And I'm sure you guys are a little bit aware that the uh, greenhouse gases that comes out of the back of those trucks, it's really nasty. It creates a blanket, that carbon dioxide creates a blanket up in our atmosphere and is actually what is causing our temperature to change. I'm sure you all know about that big scary word climate change and it's not just a word it is in fact real um, so that's another way that it can negatively affect it all right that's a bit of doom and gloom so let's talk about something a little bit happy now gardening it's really fun you can do it in your very own backyard and by doing it in your backyard you're actually combating a lot of these negative effects that I have just spoken about okay so uh, once you're not wasting all that water 
you are not going to go wrap up your fruit and veg in plastic. You're going to take it into your fridge and probably eat it the next day. How amazing is that? Now, you're also not going to drive kilometers and kilometers to go get your fruit. You're just going to open your door, step outside and pick those tomatoes, which is really cool. Now, also, by growing your own food, you actually stop that food wastage as well. So in our supermarkets, they only pick the most perfect and beautiful veggies to be put inside there. But in reality, veggies come out in all twisted, weird shapes and sizes, and they're still just as delicious and still just as nutritious as well. So if you pick a carrot and it's got two curly legs like this and some hair spoken out of its head, uh, you're probably going to laugh at it and then eat it for dinner. And it will be just as delicious as one of those perfect straight carrots. So you're not wasting that food and food is important for the world to go around we don't want to be wasting it now um also by growing your own food uh you're not purchasing purchasing as much food and if there's not as much demand for that food to come into supermarkets um then that produce will lower that land clearing will lower and you're actually helping save the planet oh my gosh i could talk about this all day long i'm going to keep giving you more positives i hope that is okay now we were talking about fossil fuels before and how traveling that can create um, that blanket, that warming of the planet, climate change. And by having a garden in your backyard, whether it be native plants, we've got some grevilleas here, some wattle, some amazing flowering gum here, all your fruits and vegetables, you're actually helping to change that climate because what happens during when plants grow is this thing this fancy thing called photosynthesis a lot of you guys would have learned about this in school um, what actually happens is these plants are soaking in that carbon dioxide that nasty stuff that um, traps heat and then in return it's producing oxygen so you're actually by having a home garden you are filtering your air quality and the roots that go down into the soil is actually filtering the water down there as well now you're probably not going to be using uh, nasty things like pesticides and chemicals on your homegrown veggies one it's bad for you it's also bad for the environment around you now I'm gonna talk about a way, a really cool way, which I'm really passionate about, that you can actually grow your plants and food pest-free without using chemicals. And it's called having a biodiverse garden. So what this means is there's lots of different species of plants going on, whether you have <laughs> natives, fruits, tomatoes, all those sorts of um, environmental good green amazingness. All right, and what happens here is you're actually creating a bit of an ecosystem in your backyard. Now, Mother Nature, she has um, been having this amazing ecosystem for, for many, many years and, and she everything has its own very place. So everything's balanced and there's this balance of nature and plants and animals. And last time I checked, Mother Nature wasn't making chemicals and fertilizer because everything has a job to cancel one thing out and maybe give another. So I mean, that sounds a little bit confusing, but Let's talk about when you have a biodiverse garden, you're going to be introducing other animals like birds, bugs, and all these things that work together. Now, what I'm talking about, you could have bugs that actually eat those pest bugs that you don't really want. So I've got actually my little centipede here. He looks like he's found a comfy spot to sit. I'm wondering if I can get him to do a little wriggle because he is in fact alive. This is Charlie. He is a giant centipede and he is in fact a type of insect, or should I say myriapod, which means many, many, many legs. And you can see all those creepy crawly legs over there. He is one of those bugs that actually eats other bugs. So um, you want to attract animals like that into your garden that are eating all those pest insects. I also have one of my favorite pest eating bugs with me today over here. I'm wondering if I can get him out. Ooh, he's just under the leaf here. This is Pete and Pete is a prey mantis. I absolutely love seeing these guys in my backyard. They're eating all those aphids, those little pest insects. Ooh, we've got a tawny frog mouth over here that's actually checking She's out my She's very throat. interested. She's very interested. So I better have my back to her because I really don't want her getting involved with Pete here. Yeah, one of my favorite little insects that do eat those pest insects that you do have in your garden. By having lots of different plants, you're actually making a distraction for these um, insects, so the, for the insects that are actually um, eating your vegetables. So they might be doing that, and along the way of these insects getting distracted, you might encourage, what Pete, where are you going? 
you might actually encourage some other insects to come and eat them. Now, we something that I know people won't really want gallivanting in their garden and eating all their lettuce is in fact snails. Now, don't be mean to snails. They are awesome, interesting, fascinating creatures. But as I said with my distraction plants, by planting lots of different things, those, whilst those snails are actually going over those distraction plants and eating that, you might get other animals in your garden that will actually eat those pesky snails. Pesky to you, awesome to me. And I've actually got some pet snails here. So we're not gonna be eating them today. I'm gonna bring them out. These are all animals uh, that you can I'm not going to be able to open this. Let's have a look this way. Oh, here we go. These guys are looking a little bit sleepy right now, but I'm going to see if I can get them out and see if they will possibly come out. It looks like they're pretty tightly um, shrunk into their shells right there now. So uh, this is Shelby and Sheldon and they are our giant panda snails here our reptile encounters they are one of the largest snail species we have in Australia they can get to 10 centimeters tall now I know these aren't the common garden snails that you do find in your garden down in Victoria but you might be lucky enough to find these in your garden if you do live um, on the east side of the Great Dividing Range along New South Wales and these guys do prefer to live in damp forests under rocks and uh, leaves and logs and they actually do eat those um, rotting leaves and soft fallen fruit so they actually help to clean up the forest floor and the stuff that they poop out is actually a really amazing natural fertilizer which is super cool. Another reason why I'm going to convince you that snails are really cool, these guys one of their favorite foods is actually fungi and mushrooms. Now you're probably saying why is that really important? Now when fungi actually grows on roots of trees what actually happens is the fungi will soak out the water and the nutrients from the soil and give it to the tree and the tree gives those mushrooms um, a place to live and grow. So when these guys are eating those mushrooms they might get the spores all over their cute face so spores are like mushroom seeds. They will slide around that forest floor, drop it off at other trees and they're kind of like little Little mushroom farmers they help that fungi to grow so I hope I've convinced you that these guys aren't all bad for your garden would you compare the size of one of them with an apple for us with it oh absolutely that's a great idea here we go Amazing. Yeah, this is also quite a large apple guys so um, this is not a full grown panda snail they as I said before they can get a lot bigger than this and it's a real shame that they're not coming out to say hi I reckon hopefully we can try and get them out to say hello um, in future and if they do come out I'm gonna film it and I'm gonna put it on our page for you guys to see because they're really really awesome now Faye has just shown me that there is a gorgeous little bird behind me here. This is Cynthia. She is our beautiful tawny frog mouth. And she is doing the most perfect pose for camouflage. This is actually what they do in the wild in the middle of the day, out in the open, when they're actually trying to camouflage. They'll stick their little head up and try and look like a broken branch. And that is something that she is doing right now. Hey honey. All right. Oh, she just had a little squeak as well. Now, if you don't want those pesky snails in your garden, you can encourage other animals like our tawny frog mouth that is an insect eating bird. And another animal that loves to feed on snails and other insects is one of our, some of our favorite animals here at Reptile Encounters. And you guys actually might guess what I'm about to talk about. It has a blue tongue. You find them in your garden. They're very good at sheltering in our backyard. It's got a tail, it's got scales. They've got stumpy little legs. Any guesses? <laughs> While you're doing that, we've got a lot of hellos to go through. We have several people who have here joined us. We have James saying hello. We have Rosita saying hi. Oh my gosh. Hello, everybody. Corey and hi. Cheryl are here. Hi, Corey and Cheryl, James and Rosita. Thank you so <laughs> much for tuning in. We so appreciate your support. And make sure you're asking me questions along the way too. I know I'm talking a million Absolutely. miles now. Absolutely. James <laughs> is saying that weird veggies are the best. I weird. totally agree. Weird veggies are the best. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, 
Wellangara State School here. Oh my gosh, hi guys! Thank and you so they're much for saying joining. that they're gar they have gardens as well. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, tell me about your gardens. I want to hear about your gardens, please. I want to know what you guys are doing because um, I can only give you so many ideas right now, and I've got someone that's really eager to meet you. And here we go. This is Bluey. Uh, a bit of a bit of a common name for you here, and I'm sure you can guess why his name is Bluey. Look at that amazing big blue tongue, and he is a blotched blue tongue lizard. And he gets his name from that tongue colour there. And he's not being a rude lizard. What he's actually trying to do is sniff you. But what he's probably trying to do is smell some food. Now these guys, they actually do love to eat fruit and veg as well, but don't worry, they're not going to be eating your tomatoes. They'd probably prefer to eat the dandelion weeds that are growing around your tomatoes. So here's your little weed killer here, and they love eating snails. I'm going to pop him down and let him have a little bit of a sniff, maybe even a chomp on something. <laughs> Now, this is a type of blue tongue that you would probably most commonly find in your backyard if you live um, around the Melbourne region. Another common blue tongue we find around here is our eastern blue tongue. And instead of those little splodgy blotches, they have stripes down their body. Now, whilst my friend Bluey here is having a little sniff, I actually want to introduce you to a different type of blue tongue. Is that okay? Alright, so he looks like he's going to go for a little wander. Let's have a look and see what he's exploring. Hi, your very, very blue tongue looks beautiful for everybody at home. Good job, buddy. Alright, <laughs> here we go. Don't step on Charlie, let's come over here. Alright, so here I have Wesley, and he's a type of species of blue tongue you probably won't be finding in your garden here. I'm just going to pop Bluey back in here. Here we go. So we're probably not going to be finding Wesley in our garden if, unless you live in Western Victoria. Um, these guys, yes, they are a Western blue tongue. And as the name suggests, they are found in the West. What are you looking at, Cynthia? <laughs> she is having just as much fun as I am today, taking in all the sights and the food and the critters as well. All right, the reason why I have bought Wesley along today, because unlike our common blotch and Eastern blue tongues, this is in fact a threatened species and one of the reasons why this is a threatened species is because of habitat loss so we were talking about land clearing for farming before and these guys they are pretty amazing at adapting to a whole range of environments including the environments they can find in your backyard they're really good at living around people okay and if you are planting native plants and also our veggie gardens you're actually creating habitat for them now you can see he's got those tiny little legs he is not oh, we're gonna go over to Charlie again he is not very quick and he doesn't like going out in big open farm paddocks all right he prefers to be sheltering under our rocks and logs and leaves and native plants um, in our garden. So you could actually create habitat for threatened or endangered animals and give them a sanctuary, an oasis um, to actually care for them by having a veggie patch, which is really, really cool. Other animals you're going to attract to your veggie patch could be things like birds and bees. Now we know birds and bees pollinate. Uh, if you want to check out one of our other episodes, we, we spoke a lot about pollination. And when flowers get pollinated i've got some amazing delicious grevillea here i mean i'm not going to eat it but our birds our some of our lorikeets and musk lorikeets and rainbow lorikeets might want to actually eat it now what actually happens is when a plant is pollinated uh, it creates seeds seeds create other plants but also their seeds you can actually collect and plant in the next season um, when you're gutting. I know my grandpa, so all my grandparents have these amazing veggie patches. And, oh, oh, Cynthia got a bit of a fright oh, there. Oh, she got a bit of a fright. <laughs> That's okay. Then if, if Wesley gave Cynthia a bit of a fright, I might pop him back in here and I'm going to pop her back on the perch maybe. Alrighty, so oh, let's pop him in here. Very good. We've got all a few right. comments while you're rescuing Cynthia, yes. if you like. Uh, yeah, tell me, everybody. Yep, we've got um, Adam says he has a bearded dragon, uh, which is awesome. <laughs> Woo, honey. All right, maybe we'll just leave her. She's, she's a little she's, bit, she's a, uh, got a little bit of a fright there. A little bit of a fright, but that's okay. We might, might leave her. She's in a nice, safe place. 
um, over in the corner there. So I'm going to leave her for just a moment. Roxy says, we find skinks in our garden, which oh is gosh. awesome. Love to hear that, Roxy. Yeah. Uh, we've got James saying they have a loads of indigenous and native plants in the garden full of butterflies wasps and tiny native bees which is so awesome oh my gosh that is beyond awesome native bees oh my gosh native bees pollinate like majority of our big eucalyptus trees um which obviously is an incredible shelter nesting ground and food source for all our native animals love that love hearing this oh keep sending the stories this warms my heart so much <laughs> Now, I was actually telling a, a story before about my Greek grandparents um, and what they actually do um, through that pollination. A, more seeds means that your food is actually going to be tastier. Seriously. So when your fruit and veg is pollinated by native animals, your food tastes better, but also you get to collect those seeds and replant them for the next season. Uh, my grandpa has made a really hilarious hammock for this giant cucumber. He's picked all the other cucumbers on the vine and he's made this little hammock for the cucumber because he's waiting for those seeds to develop. Um, and actually collect them so we can plant more cucumbers the next year. No trip to Bunnings needed. All right, so there's so many interesting um, tricks and sciences that you guys can do to make sure you have a amazing, healthy uh, garden. Um, instead of um, using uh, uh, fertilizer that is uh, not organic, you can do things like composting, which is really, really great. I'm so excited. I'm about to make a little worm farm at home at the moment, which could be really, really cool. So composting, mulching as well. Mulching, what it does, um, so that's putting things like old hay and grasses around your plants. It actually keeps the water in the soil and it also stops weeds from coming out. So that's a natural way to do it. If you have lots and lots of big open spaces and big property, you can plant trees because that actually gives shelter for animals and plants and crops. It stabilizes the soil with those big, amazing uh, roots as well. Um, and it creates shade for our wildlife. I think we have someone who's trying to have a little bit of a munch on some greens over here. <laughs> he looks interested. I think he's enjoying his little enrichment session on the table with all these delicious, oh, he is. Oh, he is having a munch. <laughs> I wonder if I rip a piece off for him. Maybe that would be. Or use yep, ah, he wants it. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, let's give him I'll make him a little a little platter. How about here? Look at this. Delicious. Nope. Oh. Oh. He's he's definitely tasting it. Giving it a little sniff. <laughs> like, oh, oh there we go. There we go. <laughs> Yum. Amazing stuff. <laughs> now, apparently. Human beings have this uh, deep down need to uh, connect with nature and it actually makes us happy and healthy. I, there's actually a sign, there's actually, well, I wouldn't say it's a scientific word, it's more of a maybe a philosophical word. It's called biophilia and that means people have an, a need to connect with living things around them. And that brings me on to my next point. We're talking about all the amazing things that um, home gardening can actually do to the environment around us but it's really good for you guys as well. It's relaxing, you keep active, it saves money as well. Um, and it's also really good for your mental health. It's said that it actually helps with dementia and heart disease. Also, all that soil, um, there's lots of um, good bacteria in the soil which can help with your immune system. So there is countless health benefits from actually having your own garden at home. And it encourages people to get outdoors, respect all the amazing things that are going on around them. And that's what I encourage you guys to have a go of. And I know not everyone has farms, has big gardens and lots of places, but um, to create habitat, you don't need a big space. You could have uh, maybe a meter or two, meter or two squared of space, and you're still creating habitat for animals. You're still creating those plants. Oh, we've got some someone chomping on green stuff here. And imagine if we all did that, if we all had two meters square of habitat in our backyard, we could make the planet so much healthier. We could even change the climate. So that's pretty amazing. I encourage all of you guys to get out in your garden, start thinking if you, if you don't have a space, how about you guys draw and plan your dream garden. I know I've done this many times. I've planned a little little uh, garden plot and what I put in there, whether it be native plants and vegetables. And because I'm really passionate about that, I would have both in my garden. Um, it's something you guys can plan and have a bit of fun doing. Now, 
I said at the very start that we were meant to go through a tour of the amazing uh, science and conservation vegetable garden at Athol Road Primary, but the weather was a little bit funny today, so we're gonna wait till the weather's better. So stay tuned in a future live stream. We are gonna be doing a tour of some amazing wildlife veggie gardens. For now, thank you so much, everybody. My name's Tia, I'm from Reptile Encounters, and I hope you've had a little bit of fun learning with me today.